Oh, okay, wait, 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 wait. I wasn't prepared to talk about testicles right now. <laughs> Talofa, welcome to the FA. We are the North Rubs. All right, in our episode today, we are going to talk about eating bats, smelly skunks, and a ride to the Badlands. Stay tuned. Welcome to the first episode of the VA. Because this is our first episode, we want to take some time to explain to you the format of our show. Each of our episodes is going to feature three different segments. Those segments might include things like tips, funny stories, or just things about our life. Maybe even projects that God Apple makes. Do crayons or something? Even brushing your teeth mm. might be a project. One of those segments will almost always be us featuring an epic motorcycle ride that we take as a family. After the episode is released, we might repost each of those segments in, as individual videos so that they're easier to consume later on. These first few videos we will consider our preseason. As we get further along, we will have different season based on where we are at geographically. So without further ado, let's get into our first segment. <laughs> This first segment is going to be called Favorite Food? Favorite Foods. We thought it might be fun to talk to Dolly about some of the foods that she misses back home. Just so that those of you who aren't familiar with the Samoan culture can get to know the culture a little bit more through the foods that, uh, that you eat. You just Google it. When they Google it, we want our video to show up. <laughs> what are some of the foods you miss from the island? Some of the foods I miss is the taros, the bananas, the yams. In Samoa, they also eat a few things that we don't often eat in the United States. You eat bats. Fruit bats. How do you eat the bats? Oh, you just grill them on charcoals. So what do you mean? You just throw the bat on the fire or what? So the coconut shells how you just light them up, it turns into charcoals, and then you barbecue the bat. No seasoning though. Salt or anything? No, just the way it is. Mm. What does it taste like? Bat. <laughs> <laughs> this is becoming very educational. A funny memory, we, we were driving our RV through Montana one day and I saw a billboard that said, testicle festival. I looked it up and apparently each year they snip the, uh, testicles off of the uh, the males so that they are now steers. I think it's steers. I don't know. Yeah. Like, kind of like a monk or eunuch. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the testicle festival, we've also heard it called like Rocky Mountain oysters, Texas oysters. Anyway, I did not realize that this was a thing. So I mentioned this to Dolly and Dolly says to me, oh, that's my second favorite part of the cow. <laughs> And what was your first favorite? The intestines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so things are a little different. They have a lot of fresh fruit that just grows wild and natural, right? So things like papaya. Guava. Pineapple. Mm. And they have some fruits that we don't, you wouldn't see, like a mountain apple. Lopa. What's lopa? So it's like edamame, and um, you take the seeds out. But this one is like a lot longer and it's red and it has a hard shell and then it's like a little nut inside. Is there like a star fruit too? Oh yes. Oh yeah. What, what's the what's the one that we ate? The Ramputan? Mm, the Ramputan. The oranges. Le V? I don't know what's the English word for that. I, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are oranges that are about the size of a basketball. And of course, there's lots of fish and seafood. Any particular seafood that you like? Oh, you mentioned sea oka. Urgent. Oka. I like oka. It's almost like a soup with raw fish chunks. It's like fresh tuna mixed with... What What, go, what else goes in the oka? Uh, the vegetables, like cucumbers, sometimes tomatoes. Oh, lime. And they mix it in coconut cream, right? Mm-hmm. 
and it's not like a soup it's not hot but it's it's uh it's just kind of soupy juicy <sighs> okay i need to be looking at the camera instead of closing my eyes because i am hungry over here sadly we don't get a lot of those foods here in in the states we try to make up for it with hamburgers and hot dogs thank you for this uh wonderful segment of Why are you favorite thanking foods me? you should think that oh you should... oh <laughs> They didn't make it you. Okay. I was talking to you. Hopefully you found that uh, interesting or entertaining. Our next segment today is going to be about what do you do if you or an animal gets sprayed by a skunk? So let me let me tell this story, and then you're going to jump in and tell your side of the story. Mm. We were staying in Acadia National Park in Maine. I had a business meeting in New York City, so I had to fly. And my flight was at 7 a.m., so I had to leave the campground at about 3 a.m. I was getting ready, and I was about to go outside and get the motorcycle ready to take to the airport. I opened the door to let our dog go use the restroom. She bolted which she doesn't usually do. So I ran outside, 3 a.m., so I'm doing kind of like that quiet yell, like, look go, no, go, look go. <laughs> anyway, she finally runs back. I'm like telling her, no, 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 bad dog. I'm grabbing her. And then I had a flashlight, and I looked. I shined it to see what she ran after. And maybe about 15 feet away is a skunk with its tail facing me, clearly upset. And then I looked down, and Luco is now rolling in the ground trying to get the smell off. And, and now it's dawning on me, Luco has been sprayed. I am touching Luco, and I've got skunk spray on my hands now. The problem was the skunk was standing in a way that was preventing me from getting on the motorcycle and leaving. And the skunk wasn't leaving until Luco was gone. She, the skunk was clearly intimidated by Luco. Using my highly developed thought process that I use at 3 a.m., I decided the best course of action would be to take Luco inside of the RV. This is when Dolly comes into the story. What happened? <clears throat> so I was sleeping and it was 3 a.m. in the morning and then all of a sudden my nose felt like it was about to explode from the smell that was trapped inside our, our bounder. And I realized my lovely husband left our dog inside sprayed with skunk. Because I was already running late to the airport. So I remember just saying, good morning, I'm sorry. <laughs> Luco got sprayed with the skunk. I've got to go. Oh, I don't remember that part where you said, good morning, I'm sorry. In my mind, I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> if not, this could be a therapeutic session for us. <laughs> what did you do after I left? I took Luco outside to help prevent the smell that was trapped inside. I'd open the windows, start searching to see how to get rid of skunk smell. In some ways, it's good you hadn't been around skunks a lot because everyone always assumes tomato juice is the solution to skunks, but it's actually not doesn't work. In the meantime, I was at the airport. I was on the subway in New York and I had skunk smell all over my hands. I couldn't get it off. And wherever I went, people were looking around trying to figure out where the skunk smell was coming from. And I didn't want them to know it was me. So I started looking around just like the rest of them so I could go undetected. What I found out that worked uh, best was hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide. Baking soda. And dish soap. Dish soap. So those were the, the stuffs that I put together and then I stripped everything in the RV, wash everything, and then wipe it with that magical concoction. Luca was the last one I had to shower. The, this uh, concoction has actually been scientifically proven to neutralize the <coughs> smell. In fact, I tried to look up why it works. It doesn't give a lot of information. but We're not experts. We, we just not. know Google said it works. We tried it and, and it works. And it did. When I landed in New York, Dolly had texted me the recipe that I needed. So when I got into Manhattan, I went to a, a pharmacy, purchased the stuff, took it to our office. And before I shook hands with anybody or did anything, I mixed up the concoction and washed my hands. And sure enough, it, it worked really well. Google, you're a genius. Just when I thought you'd had enough skunks for the day. Um, when I flew back to Maine, rode the motorcycle back into the campground obstructing the road on the way to our campground was two skunks trying to start a family and there wasn't anything i could do other than just uh sit there and watch them do their thing and try to do my best uh 
David Attenberg impression. It's, uh, I tried to close my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> if you're ever in the unfortunate situation of having skunk spray on your being or on someone else, remember hydrogen peroxide, baking soda, dish soap, not tomato juice. For our final segment today, we are going to be sharing a ride through Badlands. Badlands. This ride is one that we filmed quite a while ago. We're still trying to get the hang of things. It's older. This is why we're calling this our preseason. Um, but it was a beautiful ride. It was. It was actually gorgeous. Enjoy the ride through the Badlands. Rough, rugged terrain, extreme temperatures, scarce water. The Badlands are an unforgiving landscape. The Lakota call this place Makosika or Land Bad. Yet, there is a beauty here that can transform the soul. The kind of beauty that is found at the end of a dangerous, difficult journey. As a new rider, the Badlands were a turning point for me. For the first time, I experienced a road that invigorated my soul. The sweeping curves kept the ride interesting, but were mellow enough I could enjoy the breathtaking views accompanied by the sound of an engine and the rushing wind. It was here that I found my love for riding motorcycles. The terrain was varied and changing. It vacillated between flat, grassy plains and rugged hills and canyons. The formations were formed by sediment deposited millions of years ago and carved over the last 500,000 years by wind and water. The Badlands are filled with life. As we rode, we saw prairie dogs scouting the landscape for danger. Bighorn sheep are native to the Badlands and might even walk along the road with you. Bison are also found in this area. As the sun fell lower into the horizon, the hills were illuminated with beautiful orange light. The long evening shadows made the desert formation feel even more dramatic. We stopped for photos, but felt drawn to enjoy the experience from the road. Our Badlands journey was not dangerous or difficult. It only made us wonder, when can we come back? That is the end of our show today. 
We hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to subscribe and like the video. And we will see you next time.